Hello, everyone. Welcome to Simply Explained English, the podcast where we make learning English fun and easy. I'm Eric. And I'm Lisa. In each episode, we break down English words and phrases so that you can learn them easily. Let's get started and make English simple together. What are the words today, Eric? The first word today is appetite. Then we will continue with to poke and to take over. Then to put one's mind to something. And the final one is keep something for rainy days. Let's start with the first word, Eric. The first word is appetite. Great choice. Appetite is a noun that means the feeling of wanting to eat food. It's when you feel hungry and want to eat something. Yes, and appetite can also mean a strong desire for something like to learn or go on an adventure. Right. But today we will focus on the first meaning, which is related to food. For example, you can say, you have a big appetite if you are very hungry. Exactly. Now let's look at some example sentences to understand them better. The first sentence is after playing football, I had a big appetite for pizza. It means that after playing football, you were very hungry and wanted to eat pizza. Your appetite was strong because you used a lot of energy. Yes, and here's another one. She didn't have much appetite for breakfast this morning. It means that she was not very hungry in the morning and didn't want to eat much for breakfast. Her appetite was small. These examples show that appetite is used to talk about how hungry you are or how much you want to eat. Remember, appetite is usually used with words like big or small to describe how much you want to eat. So after the movie clips, let's have a sample dialogue using appetite. I'll be a friend and you can be a cook, Lisa. That sounds good to me. Let's start. I hear you got a big appetite, Lord ass. Let's go. Suddenly I lost my appetite. Hey Lisa, I'm so hungry today. I have a big appetite. That's great. I made a lot of food. Do you have an appetite for pasta? Yes, I love pasta. My appetite is huge right now. Perfect. I'll serve you a big plate to satisfy your appetite. Thank you, Lisa. I can't wait to eat. That was a good dialogue to show how appetite can be used in a conversation. Eric, do you usually have a big appetite after exercise? Yes, I do. After I exercise, my appetite is usually very big. I need to eat a lot to get my energy back. What's your favorite food when you have a big appetite? I love eating pasta or pizza when I have a big appetite. I find them very filling and delicious. Those are great choices. Eric, sometimes we might not have a big appetite based on our situation, right? Yes, sometimes if I'm very tired or not feeling well, my appetite is small. I don't feel like eating much on those days. That's normal. Like me, our appetite can change depending on how we feel. Absolutely. It's important to listen to our body and eat when we're hungry. I couldn't agree more. Okay, I think our viewers have understood how to use appetite. So let's move on to the next word, Eric. The next word is to poke. To poke. To poke. To poke is a verb. It means to push something with your finger or a pointed object. Yes, and we often use it in our conversations. For example, you can say, I like to poke the cake to see if it's done. Really? No, I was just joking. It was just an example. Oh, I see. Okay, let me give another example. I poked the balloon with a pin and it popped. It means that she used a pin, a small sharp object to push against the balloon. The balloon then made a loud noise and broke because it was poked. Right. Now, another one. 
He poked his friend on the arm to get his attention. It means that he touched his friend's arm with his finger to make his friend notice him. Yes, and that's how we use to poke. Remember, you usually need an object after poke. You poke something or someone. Exactly. And now, let's listen to a dialogue that uses to poke. But we will watch two movie clips before the dialogue. Well, what if I poke it? you? If Don't I poke, poke me. Just... He would poke me in the chest with the finger. Hey, John. Look at that cake. Should we poke it to see if it's soft? I don't think that's a good idea, Anna. Remember the last time you poked a cake? It collapsed. Oh, right. I forgot about that. Maybe we shouldn't poke it then. That was a fun dialogue. What do you think, Eric? Yes, it was. Anna really likes to poke things, doesn't she? Yes, she does. Seems that she likes poking cakes. It's a bit weird, but anyway, John remembers the last time what happened when she poked a cake. That's right. Poking a cake might not be a good idea. I agree, but sometimes poking can be useful, like poking someone to get their attention. Yes, but always be gentle when you poke someone. You don't want to hurt them. Very true. I also think it's interesting that we use to poke in different ways. For example, you can poke something just to check it. That's a good point. But always remember to be kind when you poke fun at someone. Exactly, Lisa. So we hope our listeners now understand the word to poke better. I hope so, Eric. So can you explain the next word, Eric? Sure. The next word is to take over. To take over. To take over. Great choice, Eric. To take over means to start doing or getting control of something that someone else was doing before. Yes, and it's often used when one person or group takes the position in a job or role. For example, if your boss leaves, a new person might take over their job. To take over is usually followed by an activity or responsibility. For example, take over the project, take over the company, or take over the class. Now, let's give some example sentences to make it clearer. The first sentence is, After Mr. Smith retired, Ms. Brown took over his position. It means that Ms. Brown started doing Mr. Smith's job after he stopped working. So, she is now doing what Mr. Smith used to do. Exactly. Here's another one. When the teacher got sick, another teacher had to take over the class. It means that another teacher started teaching the class because the original teacher was not able to do it. Now, let's have a sample dialogue using to take over after the movie clips. I want you to take over the firm. I'm asking you to take over the show for six weeks. Hello, Rosa. As you know, I'm going on a long vacation next month. Could you take over my duties while I'm away? Sure, Jack. I can take over your tasks. What exactly do I need to do? You will need to take over managing the team and handle the reports. I'll show you how to do it before I leave. Thank you, Jack. I'll make sure to take over everything smoothly. That was a nice dialogue. Eric, do you often hear people using to take over at work? Yes, I do. It's very common, especially when someone needs to replace another person temporarily. Have you ever had to take over someone else's job? Yes, I had to take over a colleague's project last year when they went on leave. It was challenging, but interesting. Oh, that sounds like a big responsibility. How did you handle it? I made a plan and talked to the team to make sure we could finish the project on time. It was a great learning experience. That's a great example of how to take over can be used in real life. It shows that taking over can be both a challenge and an opportunity. Absolutely. 
and it's a useful phrase to know, in both work and everyday situations. I hope our listeners found this explanation and dialogue helpful. I hope so, Lisa. Okay, the next word is put one's mind to something. Put one's mind to something. Put one's mind to something. Oh, that's a useful phrase. Put one's mind to something is an idiom. It means to focus and work hard on something until it is done. Yes, you can use it to say that someone is determined to achieve something. For example, she can do anything if she puts her mind to it. Good example. Another one. If you put your mind to it, you can learn a new language. It means that if you are determined to focus and work hard on learning a new language, you will be able to do it. Exactly. Here's another example. He put his mind to finishing the project by the end of the week. It means that he concentrated and worked hard to complete the project by the end of the week. Perfect. When you say, put one's mind to something, you often use to followed by a verb with ing form, like put your mind to learning, or put your mind to finishing. That's right. Now let's listen to a dialogue that uses this idiom. Two students, Sarah and Tom, are talking about their studies. I think you can do a lot better if you put your mind to it. If I put my mind to it, I can be whatever I want to be. I'm not sure if I can pass the math exam. It's really hard. Don't worry, Sarah. You can pass it if you put your mind to it. Do you think so? I really want to do well. Yes, just focus and study hard. You can do anything if you put your mind to it. That was a motivating dialogue. What did you think, Eric? Yes, it was. Tom really believes in Sarah's ability to pass the exam. Yes, he does. He told her that she could do anything if she put her mind to it. That's right. And Sarah just needs to concentrate and work hard. Exactly. Sometimes, we just need to put our minds to something to achieve our goals. I agree. It's all about focus and determination. Have you ever had to put your mind to something, Lisa? Yes, I had to put my mind to learning to play the guitar. It was difficult, but I kept practicing, and now I can play many songs. That's great. It shows that you can achieve a lot if you put your mind to it. Absolutely. I think we have explained the idiom fairly enough. Let's continue to the last one today. Okay, Lisa. The last word is keep something for rainy days. Keep something for rainy days. Keep something for rainy days. That's another interesting phrase. Keep something for rainy days is an idiom. Yes, Lisa. It means to save something, usually money, for a time when you might need it, especially in difficult times. You can use it to talk about being prepared for unexpected situations. For example, she always keeps some money for rainy days. Exactly. Let's give our listeners some examples. I'll start. Here's the first sentence. You should keep some money for rainy days in case you lose your job. It means that you should save some money now, so you have it in the future if something bad happens, like losing your job. And it's important to remember that for a rainy day is a metaphor. What it really means is a hard or uncertain time in the future, not a day when it rains. Okay, my example. I always keep some canned food for rainy days in case there's an emergency. It means that the person saves canned food now to use in the future if there is an emergency, like a big storm or another problem. That's right. So, when you keep something for rainy days, 
you're preparing for the future, just in case something bad happens. Now, let's listen to a dialogue that uses this phrase. I'm thinking about buying a new phone, but it's expensive. Maybe you should keep some money for rainy days instead, Alex. Why? I really want the new phone. It's good to have some savings for emergencies. You never know when you'll need it. You're right. I guess I'll keep some money for rainy days and buy the phone later. That was a useful dialogue. It shows the importance of saving money just in case. Yes, it does. Jane gave Alex some good advice about keeping money for rainy days. Yes, she did. Sometimes it's better to save than to spend all your money at once. That's so true. It's important to be prepared for unexpected situations, like losing a job or having a big expense. Exactly. Do you have any examples of when you kept something for rainy days, Eric? Yes, I always keep some extra savings for emergencies. It helps me feel safe and ready for anything that might happen. That's smart. I also keep some money for rainy days, not too much, just in case I need it for a surprise bill or a trip. It's always a good idea to be prepared, and our listeners can think about how they can keep something for rainy days in their own lives. Absolutely. We hope our listeners keep some money for rainy days. Yes, and we highly recommend they keep something for rainy days. It doesn't have to be much. Good advice, Eric. Okay, our followers, that's it for today's episode of Simply Explained English. We hope you found our explanations helpful and easy to understand. We're so glad you joined us. Don't forget to tune in to the next episode for more words to make your English better. Until next time, keep practicing and have fun with English. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening. Take care and see you soon.